This is a video example on how to do a ground-to-ground -ground projectile uh, problem. Ground-to-ground -ground is where the projectile is launched on an angle and then it is able to travel through the air, parabolic motion, and then hit the ground again. So our projectile here is a football. It's being punted with a velocity of 25 meters per second at an angle of 55 degrees. We want to know how much time it takes at the ground, how far the range of the football, and what maximum height the football goes to. Um, your first step in any projectile problem is if I give you a projectile that is on an angle, such as a 65 degrees, we need to break it apart into x and y. So we're going to do that first. We are going to use sine and cosine to help us out here. So we've got our vx is equal to 25 cosine of 65 degrees cosine because it is the adjacent one. And the vy is 25 sine of 65 degrees. So we crunch our numbers here. We get 10.6 meters per second for the cosine and 22.7 meters per second for the sine. These numbers we seem to make sense. We've got an angle above 45 degrees. We expect the x part to be shorter. Always check that when you do this step. To make sure that you are starting off on the right track. Okay, so just plug our numbers in our chart. Now, if we want to know how much time does it take for the football to spend in the air, we have to realize that the football starts on the ground, so our di is zero. It ends on the ground, so our df is zero. We don't necessarily know the vf. We do know this. We're looking for time. We also will find out the x in part e. So to figure out time, our best thing, if you look at all the numbers here, you want to use the df equation. So df equals di plus vi t plus one half a t squared. So I will start putting that in. So we're going to plug our numbers into the df equation here. 0 equals 0 plus 22.7t minus 4.9t squared. Now if you look at this, you end up with a quadratic. But this actually happens to be an easy quadratic to solve. Whenever you have your di and your df equal to 0, you can actually solve by factoring. which is what we shall do. We will factor out a t. We'll get 1t equals to 0. We will have another um, then expression where we have 0 equals 22.7 minus 4.9t. So then to solve for t, all we have to do is take 22.7 over to the other side, divided by 4.9. We have a negative divided by a negative. That gives us a positive time. We end up with 4.63 seconds is the time. I can actually now plug that in here into the chart. Our time is now 4.63 seconds. And now that we have our time and our Vx, we can actually use the delta x equals Vx times t to figure out how far from the base of the punt does our football land. We take our and we get that it is going to go 49.1 meters. That's a pretty good pump for a, uh, for a football player. Now, for maximum height, what we are going to be looking at here is if we take a look and on our, on our picture, A and B was talk, we're talking about where the football lands. Part C is actually talking about up here at its maximum height. So whenever you end up in this situation where you have a picture and you're looking at a different spot and it's motion for a different portion of the problem, you actually should set up a new chart because we've had some things change. So at maximum height, we're going to actually need a new chart. So I'm going to redo the chart down here. Um, we still start out with our same initial velocity of 22.7 and 10.6 for our VI and our and our vx. We know di. This time we don't know df. This is actually what we're trying to um, solve for. And we know that gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second. We don't really know time. We don't really know delta x. One thing you do know is that at maximum height, the final y velocity of the object is zero. So if we start with our projectile, it goes ground to ground. Up here, at max height, you just have a Vx velocity, your Vy 
which is your VF, is zero. That is always true for something that is at maximum height. So you want to um, just remember that trick that really helps you out when you do these, do these problems. So now that we know that, um, the best equation here is to use the VF squared, VI plus 2A DF minus DI. So now it's just a matter of plugging in numbers. 22.7 squared minus 19.6 DF. So if you crunch all that math through, you end up with 26.3 meters. Now that was actually option one for um, solving this. So I'm going to actually call that here, option one. There's actually option two. Since we already solved for how long it takes for the whole motion here, so we know that for the whole trip, it takes 4.63 seconds. We did that actually at the beginning. At maximum height, it takes half the time. So we can use that to our advantage. So we can actually say that the time to the mass is our original 4.63 divided by 2. So if we calculate that, it gives us 2.32 seconds. And now that we know that, we could 2.32 seconds, because it takes half the time to max, we could actually use the DF equation. And if we do this, you'll see that we actually end up with the same answer than if we use the DF equation. Either one is a valid way. We're going to stick this down here. Either one is valid, especially since we actually did um, go through and find the whole trip. Uh, which one do I prefer to see on a quiz or test? As long as your physics is solid, that's fine. However, option one is a more um, solid approach in that you will always, no matter what you've determined for, you can always assume that the y velocity is zero at maximum height. And if you look at that, we've solved everything. So we are 